Hello and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So if you saw my last video, that was of Seas, the Southeast Arachnid Show, and today you can see what I managed to pick up. So as we normally do, we're gonna go through what you might find the more boring things first, and then we'll move on to the live animals that I picked up. So, I went a bit more enclosure mad this time, which I'll show you in a moment. But first off, bag of moss. Can't go wrong with a bag of moss. Always on my list. So enclosure wise, we'll start off, I got this little beautiful arboreal one from Custom Aquaria. I really like their enclosures and they're always at a really good price. So one of this size, I don't know the exact dimensions, was only £15.50. And I got two of those. I also got two of these. Now I know you can't see it very well, let me see if I can just rip this off so you can have a look. These really interest me because they're like a, a little bit more of an obscure design. At least in shape. So you've got your typical sliding door and your part for your substrate. And it is just a tall arboreal, but it's quite depthy. I can't think of the word for that. Is depthy a word? I don't know. But so your width is quite thin like you would in an arboreal enclosure. Your height is there, but you've got a lot of depth going backwards, which is really, really handy for certain species. So I picked up two of these, and these were dirt cheap as well. 13 pounds each. I can't find anything that cheap down where I live. This is why I went a bit enclosure mad. Uh, and I got one of these. Oh, I'm not gonna take all the bits off, but it's a big old cube. It's a 30 by 30 by 30, and that was only 20 pounds. And although it's only got the front opening, the actual depth part that you have your substrate layer here is actually pretty deep. I Meaning if you do have a tarantula that does have a small burrow, then that's gonna be really, really handy. Oh, and I actually have a plan for this one, but we'll go on to that in another video. Now from the tarantula room, one of my favorite places to buy enclosures, I picked up two of these magnetic top lids, arboreal style again, and I actually won this tarantula room, little one, in the raffle. So I was really, really happy with that. Don't normally win the raffles, so that was pretty cool. And then last but not least, in least enclosure-wise, I just smashed my knee! Ah! <laughs> I just smashed my knee! the corner, the corner, the flashy bit of my <laughs> <laughs> uh, Right. <laughs> so yes, last but not least for enclosures, I got this second hand one from Britain Kitten for £15. So it is a large exoterra. Got damages to the top, that's why it's so cheap and needs a clean, but it's nothing I can't repair. I've done this kind of work with previous exoterras that I buy second hand too. Because I never buy them new, because they're a ridiculous amount of money if you want to buy a new one. And the last boring thing to you, we got some red runners in here, and there's like around up to 200 pieces, it says, in here. And that was only eight pounds because they're quite small, but there are some mixed sizes, there's some older ones in there as well. So that's pretty cool. Right, on to the exciting things. So, in Kelly's video, I don't know if that's gonna be out by now or not. I don't know which order she's doing hers, but we did share a mystery box or mystery bag from Portsmouth Tarantulas. So, we always try and go halves on one of those at the shows just for a bit of fun, and they will always feature on her channel. So you have to watch that over there. Now, from my good friend Dan, who used to have the channel Stick and Mix. The channel's still going, but he doesn't produce content anymore, which is a real shame. Uh, I actually got a fishing spider here. Now we've got to try and create something cool for this. The last fishing spider I had, I kind of was edgy about buying this because the last one I had didn't last long after we did the video. I created the setup for it, never once ate, never once witnessed it eat. It just hung around in one part of the enclosure and then the next thing I know it had gone. So we're gonna give that one more try and hope for the best. Now, for you tarantula lovers, I bought myself two small juvenile Mbalfori. 
So I managed to pick these up at just £15 each, which is not bad at all for their size. And then Kelly kindly gifted me another Balfouri from a different store. Now this one was a little bit more, it was £18. And I already have one that's a little bit bigger than these guys at the moment. So we're going to try and do a little Balfouri communal of four. So that would be pretty awesome. Uh, more tarantula wise, Kelly also treated me to one more gift and that was a Ternopelma Sazamai. So they are really awesome little teas. They have that blue tinge under the right light and this one I picked because it had actually recently molted. Now we were really careful taking this back in the car because obviously it's very soft bodied but for £8.50 this was then a lot bigger than all the other ones that they had. So I'm well happy with that and it seemed to survive the car journey just fine. That's it tarantula wise. So next I um, did a trade with Tony Webb from Venomous Visions and I got a Diplura species. Ruana back 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 at the up. I don't know, with names up there. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh at me. But yeah, it's one of the Diplura species. Little sort of curtain web spider and they make some awesome awesome kind of curtain webs i'm far too tired you literally woke up and started filming this but this is a little lightning speed beautiful spider and i've been tempted to buy one of these for over a year from him um so thank you tony for a wonderful trade there so tanya from secret forest creatures uk she wanted some dairy cow isopods um, and offered me some roaches in return. So I packed up some of my dairy cows for her and she gave me some domino roaches. But I didn't expect her to give me her adults. I thought she was going to give me a few of her nymphs, you know, just three or four nymphs. But no, she passed me on all the adults she had. And she kept a few babies for herself to grow on. And I thought that was really, really decent of her. So if you haven't seen her channel, make sure to check that out. She's a wonderful, lovely person, and I have wanted these kind of domino roaches for a long time. So I'm really, really chuffed with that. Now, the bit that excites me the most, and probably you the least when it comes to live things, are the stick insects. So I, this is where I went a bit mad. So, first things I picked up were the uh, Phasmagigas, or Gigas, however you would like to pronounce it. These are amazing. Absolutely amazing. I've kept these before. I'm not sure if I showed them on the channel. I think I showed them as nymphs once, but I've never shown you the adults. They look fantastic when they grow up. They're big, they're bulky, large wings. They flutter them at you in a sign of defense as in to go away. And they're just ultimately a cool stick insect. Now, unfortunately, my ones grew up, got old, died, the ova hatched, and for some strange reason, none of the nymphs from the hatching even took a nibble. Now, I know that there are loads of tactics and I know tons of the tactics, on getting baby nymphs to eat, Psh, just didn't happen. Didn't happen at all. They didn't even molt once, they didn't eat at all. They were surviving about two days a time and just frizzle on the floor. So I'm not sure if that was bad genetics. So we are gonna give that a go again. But you all love them when they're bigger. Uh, next, I got uh, Pseudophasma lacini. So this was from Curtis Lakin. Um, now he actually discovered these in the wild and they were named after him in honour of finding them. So I do like the Pseudophasma genus. They are privet eaters. I did start staying away from privet eaters because where I lived before there was no access to privet. I actually do have an access to privet again now. So I may even start trying to collect up this genus again because they are super cool. And they are flyers as well. And I'm not great with flying bugs so you can watch me scream and run around when they're older. Next we have the Brockphasma spinifemoralis. Now these are bramble eaters, fern eaters. They do tend to prefer the fern. I have access to that, but they do eat bramble too. Now these look amazing when they're grown up as well. Really spiky, robust, interesting looking species and they can take some awesome colorations on as well. That sort of mossy effect. So that is fantastic. They're not that easy to come by either. Next is the Tyrachoidae siamensis, if I've pronounced that right. I know very, very little about these. So I was speaking to Curtis about them briefly. He showed me a picture. They just look super, super cool. And I've got some research notes already written up about these because these were a pre-order. Interesting looking, really, really interesting looking. 
um, decent size fasteners as well so something that's going to be super cool to show you in the future and then last but not least I got one more species the Hesperophasma species Veron now these are rare <laughs> that's all I can say absolutely rare now if anyone is interested in these I do know that there's a breeder I'm not sure he's from about a European breeder possibly have put some of these on eBay I think I don't know whether to trust it or not I'm not saying go and buy them from there but I know buying from Curtis is a definite uh, pure bloodline species of these um, so yeah just I can't show you much more as nymphs they don't look that interesting they still stay small but when they're fully grown they've just got a really interesting look about them so because I want to delve more into the phasmids, I wanted to get a few more rarer species. I put a poll out a while ago asking you guys what you wanted to see and it was very varied. You wanted to see interesting colours, you wanted to see rare species um, and all, well, it was just loads and loads of choice. It was really scattered poll. So there we go. We have a nice rare species in our collection. There was one more rare species and I'm really gutted about this at seas. It was there. I saw it. As I saw it, this was off a completely different stall, this lady in front of me bought them and it was the only ones there. I was gutted. Now I've been searching for these for... I've had them once years and years ago, so I must have been searching for what, two and a half to three years to get this species back. I found a French breeder who sold me some over, so I have some over, so if that hatches then that's great. But to actually see nymphs and adults at this show appear out of nowhere and get snatched up by somebody right in front of me was absolutely gutting because I know a lot about this species. I've kept them before. I know how to keep them. They're wonderful and they're almost out of the hobby. Like I have spoken to people that have been massive, massive breeders for years who have said they no longer think they're in the hobby. Clearly they are only just about and these were European sellers as well at this show at Seas so it seems that there's a few sellers in Europe a few breeders in Europe in the UK there's next to nobody until now and they're at somebody else's house and I want to cry about it and I'm going to stop whinging about it now but it just was absolutely gutting okay I've just had to put a little edit in here because I forgot one of the most important pickups that I got on that day this vial here this is a little sling vial and it does contain a baby tarantula, a spiderling. I'm not going to reveal to you what is in this vial today. I just forgot to tell you that I had it. Stay tuned to the channel because this little baby in here is brand new to the hobby. Hardly anyone has got these. Now I got this from the spider shop and the spider shop don't even have them on their website. They brought a bunch to the show. It is a Mexican species, a brand new one in the hobby, so remember to stay tuned to find out what this little gem here is all about. So anyway, we're not going to do any rehousings in this video, I just wanted to show you what I managed to pick up. I hope you enjoyed the images of these animals, and yeah, I will see you next time. If you want to see what else dwells in the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. Look forward to the Balfouri rehouse, among other things. See you next time. Thanks guys, take care. Bye-bye.